And hope is based on what Jesus did on Calvary for you and for me. We are accepted in the beloved. You are accepted. I am accepted. And this is the good news. We are accepted on account of Jesus Christ. Beloved, Your Excellency, you don't know how many people just feel so good because they are close to you. Just being close to you. You know how we took a photo over there? I'm going to look for that photo and hang it somewhere. So that when people come, I'll say, this is when we were with whom? With the president of the nation. Don't think that is a small man. That's the leadership of the entire country. Chosen by God himself. For nobody sits on that seat unless God says yes. Can I hear amen? amen. You can't sit there until God says what? Yes. yes. My friend Raymond, when God is for you, who can be against you? Just serve with excellence because God is for you. And I've told your wife, remain on your knees. Every time he leaves, remain on your knees. You are leading a people who know their God. And if God is for you, it doesn't matter who is against you. God will see you through. Beloved, on that cross, every one of us was accepted on account of the righteousness of Christ. And this is the good news that we preach. And so when Jesus rises from the dead, he tells Peter, go and tell my brethren that I'm going to my God and your God, to my Father and your Father. Listen to me carefully. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is what makes the difference between Christianity and any other form of religion. Because you know what? The resurrection of Jesus Christ is your hope and my hope. There is another life. There is a better life. When he rose from the dead, John, he had said earlier in John chapter 14 that do not be troubled. Don't let your heart be troubled. Believe in me, believe also in God. In my father's house, there are many house, mountains. If it were not so, I would have told you that I go to prepare a place for you. But when I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. And that will be the greatest homecoming ever. Jesus, beloved, is coming again. And this is how he'll come. Number one, his coming will be physical. The Bible says in Acts that the same Jesus will come. Number two, it will be universal. The Bible says in, in, in Revelation chapter 1 verse 7 that every eye will see him. Acts chapter 1 says that same Jesus will come. Number three, it will be visible. Everybody will see him. Number four, it will be audible. It will not come and you hear that is somewhere in some part of the country. It will be audible. Let me read to you how it will be. As I wind up now, seeing my time. This is how it will be. Open to the book of First Peter, Second Peter, chapter 3. Verse 10 says, verse 9 says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering towards us. God is bearing with us. We are the reason Jesus has not come. Why? The Bible says he's not willing that anyone should be lost. It's not God's will for you to be lost. It doesn't matter who you are. Your religion is not important here. You are created by God and he does not want you to be lost. Amen? And so he's bearing with us till we hear this good news that you are accepted in the beloved. You have become an adopted child of the living God. And those of you who are lawyers here, you do understand what adoption is. Any fool can have a child, but no fool can adopt a child. Any poor man can have a child, but for you to adopt a child, they will even examine and find out if your mind is straight. Because once you adopt a child, it does not matter what that child is doing. That child will never be unadopted again. He or she remains your child. Amen, somebody. 
Listen to what God did. In Christ Jesus, you have been adopted into the family of God. Adoption also gives a child the right of inheritance equal with your natural children. Listen to what the Bible says in Romans chapter 8. And this is good news. The Bible says we are joint heirs together with Christ. And those of you from the legal world, you know that when you are a joint heir, then what is left, you own it together. What this means, beloved, that the humanity, the human race, has now been exalted to the level of being sons and daughters of the living God, joint heirs together with Christ. Hallelujah, somebody. That means, let me break it down to you, whatever Christ has, we have in common with him. Is he a son of God? So are you. You are a daughter of the living God. And you have right of entry, access into the presence of God. You know, nobody can approach his excellency now. But should one of your children walk around, they'll just come. Because they're going to daddy. All this that we have gone through, my vehicle could not enter here. But should one of them drive here, sir, they'll walk straight to you. Because they are not just coming to the president of the nation, they are walking to their daddy. Beloved, here is the good news. God is now your daddy. And you have access to the presence of God through Jesus Christ. May God bless you. May you remember that the one who is coming is your elder brother. May you remember that the one who is coming is your friend and is coming with all the angels of heaven and every eye shall see him. I didn't say everybody will go to heaven. I said every eye will see him. Where you will go is your choice. Because the Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That is how much God respects you. He respects you so much that if you choose to go to hell, even after the death of his son, he will still respect you. But if you choose him, it doesn't matter. There's a song that we sing that says, Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He was it white as snow. Beloved, that's the burden in my heart. I want to go to heaven with every one of you. Literally, every one of you. Why? Because God is not willing that you should be lost. The king is coming soon. May we get ready. For his coming. You are a candidate for heaven. Turn to your friend and say, my friend, you are a candidate for heaven. And until he comes, Jesus says, occupy till I come. Amen? Do what? Occupy. Don't spend your time sleeping. If you are a farmer, occupy till he comes. Look at the person who arranged that one. That is a gift. He has given gifts to everybody. Use it for the glory of God. Amen? If you are a teacher, teach. If you are serving, serve with excellence. Amen? And if you are called to make money, then make all the money you can in Jesus' name. I know some of you like making money. Let me give you the trick. Make as much as you can. Somebody say amen. amen. Then give as much as you can. Amen? amen. And keep as much as you can. And occupy till Jesus comes. And you will hear, well done, thou good and excellent servant. Your excellency, this is where you excel. You are a great giver. May God bless you. <laughs> May you keep on giving. Give as much as you can. And the more you give, the more the Lord will add. And I'll tell you, that's the secret. Make as much as you can, number two. Number three. And occupy till Jesus comes. Whatever your calling is, young people, I'm closing with you. 
whatever you want to do, seek God for your purpose, discover your purpose, perfect it, and you'll serve, not before ordinary people, but before non-people, the highest. May God bless each one of you in Jesus' name. Amen.